And welcome in to Pressbox Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of Pressbox and PressboxOnline.com. With me, as always, on these Monday night excursions into the world of baseball is former big league pitcher Ross Grimsley. And we have two lovely faces with us, and they are out on the West Coast. One I'm very familiar with, Jeff Idelson, is the former president of the Baseball Hall of Fame from 2008 to 2019. And the other is someone I've become a fan of over the last couple of days doing my homework for this, famed photographer and baseball photographer. She does other photography. Jean Fruth joins us. Welcome in, guys. And uh, let's get right to it. Jean, you have a new book out. It's called Grassroots Baseball, Route 66. That Route 66 is having a much better year than my fantasy baseball team, also <laughs> named Route 66. Sorry but to tell, hear that. <laughs> tell, me, tell me a little bit about Grassroots Baseball, because I thought that was the name of just this book. But then when I studied a little bit, I see that you have Grassroots Baseball Where Legends Begin, and it's a not-for-profit. Tell us a little bit about Grassroots Baseball. You know, when I was traveling, shooting the major league game and professional game, which I still do today, I always took time to shoot the amateur game, the grassroots game. And it's where my passion for the game lies, you know, before contracts and money and fantasy teams and lockouts and just the pure love of the game. So if I was in Japan shooting the World Baseball Classic, I'd find a little league game in Tokyo or when I'm shooting winter league in the Dominican Republic. I try to find a game, you know, a pickup in San Pedro de Macorís, and that uh, collection of images just grew over the years. And I was the traveling photographer for the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, and got to know a lot of the Hall of Famers and asked if they would write essays to go with these amateur images in the hotbeds of baseball inside the U.S. and outside the U.S., you know, Texas, Mobile, Alabama, Oakland, California, Florida, you know, all the places where baseball is, you know, New York, of course. Um, and then the same thing outside the U.S., Japan, Dominican Republic, Mexico. So the book came out in 2019 and um, it did quite well. And uh, I wanted to give back at this point in my life and grow grassroots baseball into a not-for-profit, give back to the sport I love, the craft I love. So I reached out to Jeff. He had just announced his retirement at the Baseball Hall of Fame and said, what do you think about starting this not-for-profit? And so we did. Grassroots Baseball became a not-for-profit, and we decided to start along Route 66. You know, it doesn't get more Americana than Route 66 in baseball. So we did all these wonderful clinics all along the route. Hall of Famers joined us, retire, retired players, and it was just a terrific experience, you know, just so rewarding. We started in Chicago, ended in Santa Monica. We had an RV with sponsors. Jeff drove the RV the entire time. I didn't drive once. <laughs> I sat in the back and edited, and uh, yeah, he did well. You wouldn't want to see me driving the RV, but uh, and we had just this terrific experience. And three years later, here we are, and we have Grassroots Baseball Route sixty six, the second book. So the the book and the not for profit aspects of this, Jeff. Where does the money go to? Does it go back to baseball to helping <laughs> buy equipment for underprivileged kids? What what does it do? Yeah, the, so yeah, so the, the, the proceeds from the book, uh, Grassroots Baseball Route 66 goes back into the program. And yeah, that's to help grow the game in, in, in underprivileged communities and to give those who don't have the, a chance the opportunity stand. As Gene mentioned, we did a ton of clinics in 2019, had guys like Ozzie Smith and Jim Tomey and George Brett, Johnny Bench, Trevor Hoffman, Billy Hatcher, uh, Bob Shirley from Oklahoma, they all joined us and, and did clinics with boys and girls clubs and other underprivileged areas. And there's nothing quite like when you go into a place and these kids are for the first time at the youngest age, uh, having the opportunity to experience playing a game of catch, something as simple as just playing catch and, and hearing words of wisdom from folks like you, Ross, that have worn the uniform and can relate. And uh, Interestingly, a lot of times at the end of these clinics, the kids who tried to give us the gloves back, they didn't know they got to keep them. And once they did, uh, you could just see their eyes light up uh, and the realization that, yeah, I can go out and now play catch on my own. Ross, go ahead. I know you got a yeah, couple uh, questions. Well, both of you. I mean, you know, base, uh, Little League Baseball, amateur ball is really a big thing, but fewer kids are playing now. Did you see that? And, and what was uh, 
what was the, I mean, you said a little bit about the reaction of the kids about being around these big leaguers and stuff. Do you see baseball making a comeback at the little league level, but there's fewer kids playing, it seems like. Am I seeing that right? I, I think that it varies depending on location, but certainly baseball is an expensive sport, you know, and things like travel ball and private lessons, you know, it, I think some kids get left behind and, and sports like basketball and, and football, you know, might be less expensive and more accessible to, to, to more, uh, more kids. And so that's part of our mission, you know, but we're obviously we're small, but um, I also think though that baseball is growing in other communities. And as we traveled along route 66, baseball was alive and well in small communities, communities where, there was lots of volunteers and people supporting the, the next generation of players coming up. And also where minor league and independent uh, league ballparks are because that keeps the fun in baseball. When you, pay, you know, it's, baseball connects generations as, as, you, you, as all of us know. And so when you go to the ballpark with your parents and you go to the minor league park, you know, you're growing the game and you're sparking interest in the game. So. So I'm, I'm still, I'm a, an optimist always. So I'm hopeful for the game. And Wait, well, what, what do you see in other countries? Cause I, you know, you see the, the kids in, uh, uh, and we were just talking earlier about, I was in, I lived in Havana, Cuba. I lived in Caracas. I've coached in uh, uh, Puerto Rico and Mexico. And you see those kids down there, they got a stick and a ball rolled up as a sock. They got a cardboard uh, box as a glove which is, I don't know if you saw that, but I mean, you, I've seen that in the past and, and growing up in Tennessee, uh, you know, you'd see kids playing, uh, we'd be playing in the street, we'd be playing cork ball, wiffle ball. And I just don't see that anymore, but you do see some of that uh, type of stuff in other countries. Did you get to get to see any of that? I certainly did in Cuba and the Dominican Republic and Mexico and many of the places and you know different in Japan, but certainly baseball was thriving in Japan at the youngest levels, the little leagues there were overflowing so uh, I do believe that. Uh, the younger generations are coming up and playing baseball um, and it is it's inspiring to see and it doesn't take much right in a country like. The Dominican Republic, you know, they are, they're still playing in sometimes just really awful conditions, you know, right. just their field and, and with no equipment and uh, look at the baseball players that are coming out of there. So there I don't want to embarrass Gene, but Jeff, I've got to ask you, uh, how did you two meet? Because her, her baseball photography, I really mean this Gene, it just blew, it blew my eyes open. I mean, I've never seen somebody take shots of baseball and and make it so insightful into s something different than just pictures. Jeff, how did you two meet? And how did she get the gig working with you at the Hall of Fame? And do you, obviously you concur on my compliment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when Jean, Jean came up to do a presentation during the Hall of Fame Classic in 2014, I believe it was with, uh, uh, a few other folks from the Bay Area, Eric Risper, Brad Mangin, uh, Michael Zagaris, uh, uh, the, the, the core of the great photographers. And Gene came to give a presentation on grassroots baseball and Latin American baseball, as I, as I re recollect, Gene. And uh, it was just I was blown away by the presentation. And then we got to talking later that summer about her doing some work for the Hall of Fame as our traveling photographer. And you've both been to Cooperstown, I assume, and know how remote that is. And, you know, we don't have a great younger generation that necessarily understands history. So working with Jean, we, we wanted to really elevate uh, the number of kids who were engaging with us. And so she was able to, for many years, shoot the, the, the uh, not only the grassroots game, but the current game and tie it back to history. And that showed kids that history really happens every day. It's not like Babe Ruth and Ted Williams and hundreds of years ago, it's today. And through Gene's, Gene's work, we were able to really grow our audience in a significant way of, of younger people. Gene, the pictures you took for this specific book uh, there, there was the one where the kids running a, uh, the wall behind him said lucky. I forgot what it said, but that was such a unique uh, photograph. And then as I looked at them and thumbing through it, I see, saw like 20 of those. I mean, at least 20 of them that just like popped off the screen. How do you come up with your concepts for, for what you do with baseball? 
Yeah, I know the picture you're talking about. It's luck is everywhere. Luck and, is uh, everywhere. Luck yeah. is everywhere. Yeah. But I will say I worked kind of hard for that luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do. Uh, I have a plan when I go to a ballpark. It doesn't just happen. So I, you, you know, bought that you bought that billboard. You paid for luck is <laughs> everywhere. It, it, it actually is a sign, but he, you know, yeah. he uh it's it was for like a lottery, you know, like the 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 state lottery, luck is everywhere, you know, but the the actual advertisement you couldn't see because he hit a home run and he's rounding the bases. So and the cameras that you have today, you can take more than one frame per second. So you have a good chance of, you know, getting it. And I did shoot that sign in different ways before the game, pitcher warming up, some other things. But then certainly the home run was it when he raised his hand. So you could be in the right spot. And then there is a certain amount of luck to everything with sports photography. And you don't get to say, can you please do it again? So now, some of it isn't <laughs> totally luck. The, the things you shot outside, like, gas stations or something where there were little league players sitting on walls. It just reminded me of the way I was as a kid. Right. Way too long ago, like 60 years ago, you know, <laughs> uh, that I would have wild away the days of summer with my friends playing baseball, you know. And it's just great that that's still out there, that there's still pickup games of wiffle ball on the beach. Is it as much in the United States? No, certainly not. You know, there's video games and other things that are distracting kids, but it's still out there. It's still connecting generations. And it is, it's great to see. There's still kids going to the ice cream shop after the, yep. after the little league game. And they, you know, even when they lost, they forget all about it as soon as they have the cone in their hand and, uh, and yeah, so those, the, you know, and telling those stories, and that's what I'm interested in. Action, of course, is exhilarating, and I shoot action on a regular basis, but I also want these pictures to tell a story, to show the culture, the geography, the topography, because baseball, especially, you know, Rosk traveling around, baseball is played the same everywhere you go, but it certainly looks different in different places. Uh, and, you know, with all, every place you travel, Ross playing the game, and that's my job is to show the difference and show the culture and, and what it looks like. Before I toss you back to Ross, Jeff, how did, how did Bench get involved? In other words, why Johnny Bench? He's an old buddy of uh, Ross's, but I saw him out in Oklahoma City with you for this tour. Uh, how did he get involved? Because he was part of the last book where the legend with both projects he's yeah. really a wonderful supporter of grassroots baseball in a town binger oklahoma a town of what is it jeff 800 people yeah i think it's 600 and change 800, i'm sorry 600 people yeah 610 people and you know it's been that way uh you know it, it really shows you you know not only can a major league player come out of a small town like that but make it all the way to the hall of fame you know less than one percent of players making it to the hall of fame and it's just such a great story and route 66 was was really special to him and i'll let jeff tell the story because i'm talking too much go ahead jeff, go ahead, jeff. <laughs> <laughs> i'm talking <laughs> No, he just, uh, Johnny obviously loves the amateur game and he's so proud of where he grew up, Ross. And uh, yeah. uh, to, to, to kind of take a, uh, uh, a ch you know, take take a term out of your neck of the woods, he, he is really truly the second coming of Elvis in Oklahoma City. I mean, there is <laughs> nothing like it when he shows up. It's like the king really? is here. And uh, he, they love him in Oklahoma City. And he tells a great story in the book, Ross, about sitting on, uh, you know, sitting on the couch with his dad, Ted, who was a propane truck driver, and he's four right. years old. He's watching Game of the Week. And you know the story, I'm sure. Yes, but, I do. I just heard yeah. it recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's he turns free. To, you know, yeah, to, for those who haven't heard it, the commentator says, uh, now batting for the Yankees, uh, the next great, the great switch hitting center fielder from Commerce, Oklahoma, Mickey Mantle. And Bench turns to his dad, Stan, and says, you can be from Oklahoma and play in the majors? <laughs> rest is history. You know, yeah. my, fav my favorite bench story being here in Baltimore is Jim Palmer never gave up a grand slam home run in his major league career. He gave up one in triple A. It was to Johnny Bench up in up in uh, Buffalo or Rochester. But Palmer explains it. They weren't playing at the regular stadium. So they were playing like at a park for some reason. And the ball like went and just rolled. So Palmer wasn't giving it away that he really gave up a grand slam home run. 
Go ahead, Roy. Of course Roy. not. Go ahead. <laughs> really, he's not going to do that. You, you guys talk to a lot of people, you know, like bench and so he's, uh, who did you find that was the most interesting to talk to? I know all, all of them were special. I understand that. But was any one uh, more interesting than the other? Well, I mean, when I think about the, the book that Gene put together, you know, it's eight chapters, eight essays, and there's a there's a legend that wrote uh, an introductory uh, personal essay about what it was like growing up in that region for, you know, for each of the chapters. And I don't know if one was more interesting, Gene, than the others, but, you know, from Jim Tomey talking about the value of his family around him and, and growing up in Peoria to George Brett wondering how he, the runt of the litter, was ever going to make the majors when he had Kemmer and Bobby in front of him and and uh, Alex Bregman is the only contemporary player in the book, uh, just waxing pros about growing up, uh, you know, under the tutelage of Ray Birmingham, who was the coach at UNM, University of New Mexico, and being a bat boy and traveling along Route 66. I don't know there was any one story, uh, Gene, that resonated completely with me. Yeah, I, I mean, they're just so different. The personalities, as you know, Ross, are just so, I mean, yeah. Jim is the nicest guy on the planet. Johnny is an incredible showman, and you can't get enough of his stories. And and George Brett is just so on fire when he tells his stories. You know, it's just, um, you can just, you just think about being a mother and what it'd be like, you know, trying to reel that in with those boys and, and, uh, and then his own kids, you know, kind of the same personality. And I, I, I just love the differences. I mean, I really think we got a good mix, you know, of, of different stories coming from such different perspectives. You know, Johnny, I got to know so much because I did go back to Binger. I went to his high school reunion, which was just, oh, just wow, terrific. Really? Oh yeah, I mean the ladies there are, are you know, they the, his high school class that they came to Oklahoma City too. I've met them several times, and they had uh, their high school reunion at the community center, you know. And Johnny was passing around the cookies after we ate, and it was just, it's just incredible, you know. It's just very. And he's so tied, you know. To, yes, he lives in Florida, but he, his heart is certainly in Binger, and he's you know very connected there. There's a Johnny right. Bench Museum and. Pretty, pretty cool. Jeff, how is the how is the book doing at its at the beginning of this tour? I mean, I know you're about a month into it. How's it? What's the response you're getting to the book? You know, we 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 have a tour laid out that's just it's it's by state in in the hotbeds of each state, and so it's worked out really well. Obviously, Oklahoma City and having Johnny uh, there is tremendous. And we really told so many stories all throughout Route 66 in Oklahoma that the, it's a good audience. And then, you know, you get a you get a bigger audience, it's not just baseball, you know, it's it's moms and it's people who are interested in Route 66 and nostalgia. And, you know, Father's Day obviously was a big deal and uh, still a big deal coming up. And, you know, and then the same thing, you know, that we're getting in Amarillo, Texas, you know, there was so many different stories. So. It, it created this really wide audience. So we were fortunate that so far we're early in the tour, but it's been, it's been a really terrific response from people. The book is Grassroots Baseball, Route 66. And Gene Fruth uh, is a photographer who took all the pictures in it. It's got a preface by Jeff Idelson. Uh, it's got afterwards by Johnny Bench, Jim Tomey. And I think, uh, did Alex Bregman write something too? He did. He's our he did. only current day player. And, and uh, lucky, I mean, some good things came out of COVID. One was Alex was sitting still for a minute. So we got a chance to <laughs> get a good essay out of him. And if you want to look at some of Jean's other work, you can go to her website, which is jeanfruthimages.com. Jean, I had to ask you a couple questions about some of the images I saw in there. You got Cal Ripken touching Tony Gwynn, they went in together into the Hall of Fame, touching uh, Tony Gwynn's plaque at Cooperstown. How did you get, I mean, uh, did you suggest it to Cal? I did. And, and I, he said, I, yeah. yeah, okay, I like that idea. Yeah, I was taking uh, kind of the sights and sounds of Cooperstown around induction weekend. And just instead of, I was taking portraits for a few years of the, of the Hall of Famers. And it was actually the chairman who suggested, you know, I, wouldn't it be better to have, you know, kind of a sense of place of these photos and change it up. She liked the portraits, but uh, it was her suggestion to um, 
to show more of Cooperstown. So I got Wade Boggs who likes to fish on the lake there. And that was a very interesting one. Another story made for another day. And, um, and uh, Raleigh Fingers. And uh, Goose Gossage. And Goose, yeah, you really did check out the website. Eating yeah. burgers at the Cooperstown Diner. I couldn't get them out of there after the photo was done. They're like, no, we're finishing the burger. We'll see you later. Like, right. And it is a good burger, so I don't blame them. And then Cal, and then there was a, there was a bunch of them like that. Randy Johnson standing in the middle of Main Street, looking as large as as life, you know, in full uniform. That one had to be done very early in the morning before fans came out. So it was a f really fun photo shoot. And Cal, you know how important you know to pay tribute to who he went in with and. It was a great moment. It was a difficult photo to take because the place was packed with people. It was in the middle of the day. And Cal asked me, he said, what do you, what are you trying to convey as I look at this? And I said, if you could just touch it and just think about a, a fun moment or a sweet moment between the two of you during that induction weekend. Yeah. If, and, and then this lovely smile came on his face and, and that was- yeah, you caught, caught a nice image. Yeah. There's being from Baltimore. So the other image I wanted to ask you about was the, the Robinson. Was that three generations of Robinson? Yes. Brooks, yes, his was. son and his grandson. Yeah. And I believe that was Jeff's idea. Wasn't that one yours, Jeff? Was that was the the three of them? We we did it at third base, of course. We I figured did it, it was out. over at the ballpark there. Yeah, yeah, it was at the ballpark. And I believe the story is I hope one of them. The announcement of one of them, maybe it was Brooks' son, was announced while he was playing in Cooperstown that his wife just had the baby. Help me, Jeff. Yeah, I think it was 19, it was 1966 Hall of Fame game, and Brooks David, who's the 50-year-old, was uh, that was him. And so Brooks is out there. You know, Connie's uh, in Detroit, or I don't know if she's in Detroit or Baltimore. And Brooks Robinson, you're a new daddy. <laughs> and that, <laughs> That's how he that, found out. And that middle-aged kid was the little tiny kid that was born 50 years ago. And then there's the grandson. What tell us what the what the best way to get the book is? Grassrootsbaseball.org. Grassrootsbaseball.org, and you can buy it. And I'm sure Amazon has it as well. Amazon does, yes. Amazon has it, bookstores have it, Barnes and Noble, all those places you can right. order online. And so sure. tell us, Jeff, what's next? What what are you two going to team up on next? What's the next tour? Out in the baseball in outer space or <laughs> Now we'll leave that to the current game, uh, you know, with launch yeah. angle, et cetera. Uh, you get Jeff, maybe you could get Jeff Bezos to pay for it and take you up and get <laughs> you hitting take baseballs. Ross back to Havana, Cuba and, and shoot him where he played back in the day. Love that. That would be special. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's a soldier have, there. Jeff, do you have another idea? Or ACDC, that'd be better. <laughs> where grassroots baseball goes? Well, Stan, as we were as we were uh, wrapping up the book last fall, one of the final shoots that that we worked on that Gene orchestrated was uh, girls playing baseball, and we got this great photo of the Los Angeles Monarchs who play under the Baseball for All umbrella uh, in the book. And as we as we thought about it over the winter and what we'd like to do next, uh, we came up with the idea and thought that girls and women in the game, past, right present, on. and future, on and off the field, around the globe would be a great topic and there's so much content it's growing here in the u.s finally after years of having the doors open and shut i think there's 11 women coaching in the minors one who's managing eight women played on all men's college teams uh this year we saw one of them kellyanne jenkins ross who's got a good knuckle curve knuckle and a, yeah, a decent fastball to, yeah she's good and uh we're, we're going to see kelsey whitmore next weekend who, who who's playing with uh uh she's playing Very with nice. staten island Ferry Hawks and uh, and the, and there's just so much rich content around the globe. The game is played in Pakistan. It's played in, uh, by women. It's played in Africa, Uganda, in Africa, Asia, and uh, as we saw, Ichiro pitched against an all girls team in Japan last fall. So there's a lot of great content, and we want to be there to tell those stories. Well, great. when you tell that story, we'll be glad to have you back on. It's been great having you on. I want to get you out on time. Again, Gene Fruth, G J E A N F R U T H images.com is her website. The book is Grassroots Baseball Route 66. Grassrootsbaseball.org is how you can buy the book. It's Jeff Idelson who wrote the preface to the book, and Gene Fruth, who shot all the photography. 
Ross, you got a last one for these two folks? Yeah, I do. I have one question. When you went to Amarillo, did you go to the stadium and was the wind blowing in or out? <laughs> well, you're talking about the old stadium where the Gold Sox played? Yes. I, I managed there. I managed there for two years in the Texas Louisiana League. And the stockyards oh. are right behind. The- <laughs> oh, I just yes. heard. Oh, yes. Yeah. Crook and Kipe told me this story just a few days ago. They said, oh, my God, when the if, smell came if in. If it's blowing in, it's awful. It blows out. <laughs> and they also told me about a game that was so fun, throwing the ball up against this net and having a come. There was some fun game that they played. Anyway, they did have great memories. Yes. Besides oh, no, I, the, I, I loved, I loved them. We had a great time there. But I just wanted to ask you, the smell, the stockyards were awful. <laughs> the I'm game so is farming. called flip the game is called flip flip, flip right the game is called flip all right no. again jeff idelson gene fruth the book is grassroots baseball route 66 thank you and good luck on the rest Gosh, of thank tour. you so much guys right. it was great oh, this was thank so you. fun thank you all so right. much. love the work love the all work right. thanks talk ross and soon. stan talk to you soon ross i gotta tell our listeners and viewers about the costas inn That's right, the Costas Inn, located on 4100 North Point Boulevard. Everybody in Baltimore, Ross, knows that if you want to go out and eat crabs, it's one of the best places to go and eat your crabs, crab cakes, crab soup, steaks, subs, uh, salads, chicken dishes, anything you want, they've got it, including great spare ribs. 4100 North Point Boulevard, great place to go watch sports. But one of the things we're pointing out on these on these Zooms when I talk about Costas in is during the pandemic, they realized that there are a lot of people weren't going to be comfortable getting back into restaurants right away. So if you're not, you can still taste the Costas in great food. Go to costasin.com, costasin.com. Check out the menu, order a pickup, and you can pull it up curbside, pull it in. They pack everything neatly orderly doesn't spill over anything i wish i could get it delivered to you in uh, bradenton they'll send it to you they'll send crabs to you i got i got crab cakes they they sent me some crab cakes i ordered a buddy of mine got them for me they were fantastic as everything is yeah they they're a great place it's one of ross's favorite places these guys have been great to me over i've known them now for close to 30 years now great family the costas family uh, Tree and Tafo's family. Uh, you and I are back on next week, and I can't remember if we've got somebody picked out or not for our guests. We'll talk about it over gotcha. the next couple of days. All right, you, you good, buddy? Yep. I think I. I'm trying to remember if I've got somebody. <laughs> I have to check my notes. I don't I can't know. Remember? I, I was so busy the last week, I lost my mind. <laughs> you, did you have a good time at Singleton's golf tournament? It, the, the Cool Kids tournament was outstanding. Was we had a lot of people show up. Three days. Uh, uh, I got a great picture of Bob Turley and Mike Flanagan. Uh, the first. I got it. Last the first pitch. pitch. I got that I, too. I got it at the uh, auction. I bid on it, and I had to. I had to beg a guy not to not to bid on it so I could get it. <laughs> but I've got it was, one uh, of those too, signed oh, by Bob I, I Curley. Love it. You know, Flanny, Flanny was a dear friend, and uh, uh, it, it, but it's autographed. And I just put it up yesterday, I think. But it, it's fantastic. But a lot of money was raised. We had a great time. Had a great turnout. Uh, cool kids, uh, outstanding. And speaking of cool kids, you have one cool kid. Your granddaughter had her high school graduation from what yeah, school? They had, they had it at the Bel Air High School. They had it at Ripken Stadium, and oh, cool. uh, it was outstanding. A, a lot. lot it was uh, she had almost 400 kids graduate in her class, uh, and it was a, a lot, lot of fun. A little warm, but it was it was outstanding. Just All a beautiful. Right. Well, I'm glad uh, you and Bird thing. got got yes. up here safely and back safely. Yes, sir. All right, we did. I'm um, getting Great ready time. to watch the O's play, and then yep. at nine o'clock tonight. Got to watch Game Five of the Warriors. And the uh, self. Yeah, I forgot that was on. Yeah, we we'll have to watch that too. Yeah. All right. Who's going to win that series? I gosh, I don't. Well, probably the Warriors. I would think. It's going to be tough. It's gonna oh be tough. yeah, yeah. A lot. I'm busy better, watching the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning down here. That's going to be wild. Too. They start they Tuesday start, against they the they Avalanche. Start, they start Wednesday against. Is the it Avalanche. Yeah, Wednesday. That's Wednesday, right. Yep, yeah, yep. against the Avalanche. That should so be that a great be, series. It'd be outstanding. Yeah. You know, it's funny, Ross. Real quick before we get off. 
Uh, I don't, I mean, I used to be a huge Baltimore Clipper fan. I was a yep. big hockey fan. I loved ice hockey. Skip Jacks but, too. But, but I don't watch it that much. But when I was watching the Rangers versus the Hurricane, yeah, the Carolina Hurricane, right. And then I'd turn on like Tampa or Florida. I said, these guys, the Rangers look like they're skating in slow motion <laughs> and, and the Hurricanes. I mean, yeah. Tampa is Tampa is really good. Well, well Colorado, they, are, they might be the best the, team in the yeah. uh, in the league. Yeah, the two well, best. That, teams that should be fun. I, I love to watch it. Love to watch yeah, it. I do too. Yeah. Thanks, Ross. We'll see you Thank next you. Monday, probably back at our usual time of six yeah. o'clock. It was very enjoyable talking to Gene Fruit and Jeff Idelson. The book again, Grassroots Baseball, Route Sixty Six. Uh, for Ross Grimsley. Jeff Idelson, Gene Fruth, I'm Stan the Fan Charles, and we'll see you down the road pretty soon.